After an extended period of seemingly fierce resistance, a white flag has emerged above the Unity battlements. As in a statement made on Twitter, X if you so will, states, We have heard you. We apologize for the confusion and angst the runtime fee policy we announced on Tuesday caused. We are listening, talking to our team members, community, customers, and partners, and will be making changes to the policy. We will share an update in a couple of days. Thank you for your honest and critical feedback. Now, whether or not this is actually surrender or another attempt to simply allow the fire to die down, well, I suppose we're going to have to wait a few days to actually see. As, uh, well, a not too uncommon strategy in this particular sphere of development, of course, in gaming in general, in fact, is to say, oh, 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 God, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. You, you feel offended by this thing I did. Well, that's terrible. Um, how about, since you're very angry, how about we tell you to just calm down? for a few days, which will turn into a week, which will turn into a month, and we'll get back to you with changes at some uh, unspecified point in the future, when hopefully you're no longer paying attention. Hey, it might sound like a silly strategy, but you'd be surprised how often it has actually worked. And in the long term, that is probably Unity's actual strategy. So, Unity tried to begin with to offer a fair bit of resistance via, well, shutting up and hoping the angry people would simply just go away. They did make a couple of clarifications here and there, like for example the, uh, the problem with malicious installations. I love how this drama has caused the term malicious installation to be a thing, where people were worried that people would simply install their game, delete it, and then install it again to simply continuously and reoccurringly charge the developers. Unity's response to this was, trust me bruh, we've got an internally developed software that'll absolutely prevent this. You want what? You you want to know what it is? Well, no, 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 no. That's proprietary information. We can't possibly tell you. <laughs> Which, for some mysterious reason, people didn't consider to be very um calming. I know, weird, right? <laughs> see, see, that's <laughs> that's kind of the problem. You go and do something crazy like this, like you're already charging a licensing fee, you're already taking a revenue share, and now you also want to charge for every installation of the game made on every device somebody owns, and then when somebody brings up the reasonable fear of, hold on, this could very easily be exploited, your response is, trust me, bro. Like, you seem to have already violated that trust on multiple occasions, but oh well, details, details. This may also come as a response to the fact that people are getting a little bit more officially involved, shall we say, because, again, originally they seemed to simply just want to shut up and see if the fire would die down, because people yelling at them isn't actually the biggest concern, really. People being angry on the internet is hardly a rarity after all. If nothing of actual consequence was being done, Unity might very well be able to ride out the wave, as, very importantly, you may notice that a lot of the other large engine developers have also been rather silent on the matter, as if they too were thinking, yeah, this does sound like a wonderful monetization opportunity, but we're gonna need to let the heat die down a little bit. Well, this happened too the other day. Uh, the European Game Developers Federation, a trade union essentially, calls for EU regulation on non-negotiable contracts in wake of Unity backlash. So what they're essentially demanding is um, the Commission should bring much needed market certainty by banning retroactive pricing and contract changes in amongst other things. Now this part here is the big one though, because all of these engines, all of these services, basically all of them, essentially function on the idea that any agreement you have with them can change like that. They can change the rules whenever they want. Now they'll give you like two or three months warning, you know, because that makes the violation so much easier to bear. <laughs> But in essence, all of these uh, providers, all of these developers, have written their terms of service in such a way that it gives them absolute power. This is the problem with a continued service, as we discussed in the last video on Unity. Well, it's a problem with everything. Again, this is why we unironically do need some sort of online bill of rights to protect us against this and give end users and users of all various platforms on the internet rights on that platform that will simply supersede anything that the platforms themselves can put into motion as legislation via TOS has 
will basically become the standard. Now, this thing here, however, is one step too far, because by making a contract and pricing unchangeable and unnegotiable, well, essentially, you are going to need to make the pro contract so draconian as that it will be able to stand up to any uh, sudden changes in pricing over the course of the next you know, five odd years period, for example, or you need to change contract every year or so in a very, very, you know, snappy, rolling way. Now, that has a lot of problems as well, as of course, if you run out your contract, you then need to renegotiate a new one, which you're probably going to start doing before the old one runs out, otherwise you will lose access to the Unity tools, which means you might lose access to the tools to develop your actual video game, sending everything to a screeching halt. Which means that you need to continuously renegotiate the terms of your agreement constantly. And if it's a long-term agreement, well, in all the likelihood, the price will be so high because, of course, the company isn't going to take aboard any of the risks of suddenly changing circumstances that you will defeat the point of having ready-made engines in the first place, namely lowering the barrier to entry, allowing people to pay a small licensing fee rather than thousands and thousands of dollars in an outright purchasing fee, as, well, a lot of softwares back in the day, for example, cost a lot of money, an obscene amount of money, to the point where most people wouldn't ever have a standard chance of getting one of these high-end softwares, particularly in the field of my family's company, for example, which is CNC machining. A lot of the high-end tools there cost an arm and a leg and a heart and a liver and whatever else remains of you, frankly, in all in all due future indentured servitude. It's kind of terrible. But of course, the weakness of the current system is also that it's literally just an honor system. That's all it is. Unity goes, we promise to not gangbang you as violently as we technically, theoretically, legally could. And the developers will in turn shut up and give them their money. But, uh, well, that is also the only then recourse when Unity does deserve when they decide to insert PP. Because, well, all you can do is yell. And even then, again, like, oh, we, we will update you in a couple of days. Like, we'll get back to you. This is literally, in all due likelihood, them hoping that the fire will go out in the meantime. Then they'll put out some equivocations that basically says, yeah, we're still going to do this, but... You know, here's a little bit of, of obfuscation, making you wonder yet again, oh, is that really what they mean? Do they really mean each installation? Like, how will this work? And then they'll buy themselves some more time as they'll spend another th two or three days going, oh, actually, we meant this, and obviously get a little bit more, and another two or three days, and if they manage to survive a few weeks of this, then in all due likelihood, the fire will have died down as people move on to the next controversy. Now, right now, for a, however, everyone is hyper-motivated to attack Unity on everything they can, which is a good idea indeed. This one was an interesting one. Uh, Unity reportedly told Dev Planned Parenthood and Children's Hospitals are not valid charities. So the uh, runtime fee would be waived for charity organizations. Okay, fair enough. Now, the Children's Hospital, I'm presuming that's absolutely a charity. It's a Children's Hospital. How bad could it be? But Planned Parenthood. Unless industrialized baby murder has become a charity in the current year, then I don't know about that one. <laughs> then again. <laughs> As I said, it is 2023. It wouldn't surprise me if baby murder has indeed become a charity to some. <laughs> Planned Parenthood. Um, it's an interesting name, shall we say, for an organization that is anything but... This also came out, uh, well, literally uh, today, actually, by the time of recording here, as people are digging up a lot of dirt on Unity, as again, right now, the fires are blazing quite aggressively. They even got a little bit of a community notice here when they said that only 90% of their developers will be hit. And fair enough. But as the community note points out, that still means that 23,000 developers will be charged every time somebody installs their games hardly ideal. Not to mention, the moment this, as we mentioned in the last Unity video as well, the moment this becomes industry standard, the ceiling will be lowered just a bit, 
and a little, a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, until this is simply just a thing now. You're simply just expected to pay an installation fee for the usage of their code. And then they'll move on to the next ridiculous monetization scheme for the simple reason that money is finally again beginning to become rare. The unfathomable quantities of investor trillions, literally trillions, that have been flowing through the market over the course of the last two decades is finally running dry. Repeated bunk investments again and again have run the market out of both charitable interpretations of new ventures and of course the good old fashioned ESG interpretation which would throw money at something so long as people with the correct skin colour was featured prominently in the game's development art. Now that companies are going to have to go back to actually earning their keep yet again, a lot of companies realize that, hold on, we've built our entire business model around employing as many diverse individuals as possible, and we can't actually bear it. I heard somewhere that Unity apparently employed 7,000 people for developing a software. No software developer needs 7,000 employees. It simply just doesn't. Twitter is a beautiful example of that. It fired the vast majority of its employees, and the site has not only remained stable, it's in fact managed to develop a new feature in the time when it was firing people in the preceding years when it had thousands of employees at its beck and call. Companies are going to have to learn yet again that they need to actually make a product on a sustainable basis to be able to remain businesses. But that is going to take a long ass time. It is going to take a lot of firings, a lot of cultural restructuring of the companies themselves, and a lot of readjustment of values. And seeing as the companies too understand this, it is going to take a very long time for them to, how to put it, um sell these adjustments to their investors and their employees, meaning they're going to need a nice big fat piggy bank with which to do it. We could also point out that there's a fair bit of shady nonsense going on on the back end of Unity, of course. In fact, amusingly enough, just as the uh, white flag was raised, we're now seeing the conspiracy theories videos beginning to pop up, alleging all sorts of uh, connections and allegations. And a lot of them do look very, very convincing. As uh, several of the members involved in the back end of Unity, well, let's just say they have a long and storied history of suspicious business dealings. They might not want a lot of that to uh, come out into the public purview, and so wishes to try and deflect some attention to sweet. I guess we'll have to wait and see as to whether or not these changes will be worth anything, but my money is on probably not. The big question then is whether or not this will remain in the public consciousness for another two, three, four weeks. We shall have to wait and see. Until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Go ahead. Have a good day.